I dream my dreams away. There's no escape. Everyone's expected to dress up. Even actors. I'd like to uh, lower the tone of the evening by attempting to recite the great work of Percy Bysshe Shelley. The poem Ozymandias. I met a stranger from an antique land who said two vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Aswan marks the end of the tourist trail. Those who venture south from here do so at their own risk. The ferry boat Sinai takes everyone who wants to travel and their possessions. I've never seen so many people trying to get on a ship. No turning back now. From here on, everything is new, unfamiliar, and very confusing. As Egypt slips away, so does any remaining hope of predictability. The journey ahead should be simple enough. Across Lake Nasa to Wadi Halfa, where we take a train for Khartoum and south to the heart of Africa. But of course, it isn't as easy as that. The whole point about this ferry is it only exists to connect with a train in Wadi Halfa, which is in the Sudan, Aswan being in Egypt. And the train service used to run to Khartoum daily. Then it changed to weekly. And we just heard um, a few days ago it was now going to run fortnightly but no one had told the ferry company. So we actually had to arrange a meeting between the governor of Wadi Halfa and the chairman of the ferry company to actually get this ferry going. So uh, it's partly our work that this ferry is going at all. We will get to Wadi Halfa in the Sudan, we hope, where we have heard that the train we connect with is now running every month. So, you know, this is Africa. And on Lake Nassau, schedules are flexible. Life on board the Sinai is remarkable for its tolerance. No one seems to complain about lack of space, and fortunately, no one else has yet found the reading room. I settle down to do a bit of preparatory research. I wish I hadn't. From what I can tell, just about anything you eat in Africa could kill you. <laughs> There's so little room on board that the restaurant is also the immigration office. They'll serve you a salad and stamp your passport. What kind of soup is that? Chicken. Chicken. Oh, that's incredible. Okay, not all at once, that's all at once, too much. Right, thank you. Shukran. Salat. Oh, nice. Spoon. No cutlery on this plate. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. Salat. Great, thank you. Thanks. Hamid al-Awad. Hamid al-Awad. Hamid al-Awad. Hamid al-Awad. The food's rather tasty. Yeah. And it turns out I'm eating it at the captain's table. Good. I have, My family good, I have a good job. wife. Really? Yeah. So do I. Yes. Very important in this life. Isn't it? Lovely. Mm. Egyptian wife. Mm-hmm. 
Only one. Mm. You've only one? Yeah. Oh, I have somebody yeah. have more. I hope yeah. so too. Yeah. No, you can't. I'm Muslim and I can't. Oh, uh, but Nazi, they look yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you've got one that's just right, then that's fine. You don't want any more. Next morning, the port of Wadi Halfa lies ahead of us. It looks about as promising as my guidebook's description of the country we're approaching. The Sudan is fraught with turmoil, economic chaos, civil war, drought, famine and refugee crisis. I can't wait.